On September 1, 1939, Germany invaded Poland and started the Second World War. England, still hoping to avoid war, issued an ultimatum to Germany, demanding they withdraw from Poland. His Majesty's government satisfactory assurance that the German government suspended all aggressive action against Poland and promptly withdrawn their forces from Polish territory. His Majesty's government in the United Kingdom will, without hesitation, fulfill their obligations to Poland. Germany would ignore this ultimatum, and the British would formally declare war on Germany on September 3, 1939. France would follow suit, as well as the independent domains of the British Commonwealth. While the Polish campaign was happening, fighting in the West was extremely limited, if any occurred at all. The closest anyone would come to an offensive would be the French Saar Offensive, also known as the Phony War. Germany would have one last attempt at peace on October 6th, though the British government would reject it, stating, Past experience has shown that no reliance can be placed upon the promises of the present German government. Following this, Hitler would order an immediate invasion of France, though he would eventually be convinced to postpone it until April of 1940. The battle for Western Europe had begun. The first real campaigns of the West would actually be in the North, with Germany invading Denmark and Norway to protect its shipments from Sweden. With those countries secured, Hitler then looked to France. Originally, Hitler wanted to attack the Maginot Line head-on. Maybe he thought German superiority could break through any obstacle, or maybe he was thinking of something similar to this. If we attack where the line is strongest, then Fritz will think that our reconnaissance is a total shambles. This will null him into a sense of false security. And then next week, we can attack where the line is actually badly defended. Whatever the reason, his generals would eventually convince him that an attack around the Maginot Line would offer a better chance for success. The attack would go through neutral Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. The first setback for the Germans occurred when an aircraft carrying the Luftwaffe plans for the invasion was forced to land near Mechelen in Belgium, and those plans would end up with the Allies. While they doubted its authenticity, expecting a repeat of the Schlieffen plan, Allied units were put on alert for a possible attack through the Low Countries. The Allies never anticipated an assault to the Ardennes, however, as it was deemed too dense for tanks to get through, but the loss of the plans would result in Germany focusing their assault through that area. At 2100 hours on May 9, 1940, code word Danzig was transmitted to all army divisions, and the invasion was to begin. The secrecy of this operation meant that some officers were not even with their units when the order was given. Luxembourg was occupied immediately, virtually unopposed. There were some failures from the Germans, however, like the first large-scale paratrooper attack, the Battle of The Hague. Even with that, the Netherlands also fell quite quickly, taking only a few days. The Germans were easily able to gain air superiority over the Low Countries. The campaign through Belgium started out with some difficulty, as Army Group B was weaker than planned and the offensive was at risk of stalling. This would result in the Germans using gliders to capture and disable Fort eben -Emel, as well as using paratrooper drops to capture bridges over the canal. Belgian High Command was so shocked by these defeats that they pulled their army back to a defensive line five days earlier than expected. With the British and French not yet entrenched, France sent up two mechanized divisions to meet the advancing German tanks. The battle that would ensue would be the largest tank battle up until that point, with 1,500 armored fighting vehicles participating. This would give the French and British enough time to finish entrenching, and the first and only time German armor frontally attacked the strongly fortified position was successfully repelled. The campaign through the Ardennes resulted in a different outcome, with German units cutting right through Belgium into France. A number of defeats to the advancing Germans almost cut off the armies in Belgium from those in France. This would leave the German tanks in a very vulnerable position, however, with many running out of fuel and ammo far ahead of the infantry. The British realized that a big enough mechanized force could cut them off and destroy them, but a wave of low morale swept over the French high command, with French Prime Minister Paul Renault phoning Churchill to tell him, We have been defeated. We are beaten. We have lost the battle. When Churchill flew to Paris, he already saw them burning documents and preparing to evacuate when the time came. The Germans continued to advance almost unopposed to the coast, Whatever resistance they did meet, they would call in Luftwaffe support which could take only 10 minutes in some cases. The Allies did try to launch some counterattacks, but all ended in failure. All the failures would result in the dismissal of Maurice Gamelon. He would be replaced by Maxime Vagon, who would spend a few days to come up with a new plan to fight the Germans. The British and French armies were supposed to launch a counterattack on May 21st, but with the French not ready, the British decided to attack alone. Despite the fact that the British only made one-fifth of the planned attacking force, they caught the Germans completely by surprise and began pushing them back, destroying a large amount of panzers in the process. Rommel responded to this by making a gun line of Flak 88s. 
This proved very effective at halting the Allied advance and Stuka's strikes had forced them back. In Belgium and northern France, the situation was now dire and by the 24th only Dunkirk and Calais remained under Allied control. Calais would fall only three days later, leaving Dunkirk standing alone. On May 24th, Hitler issued the controversial halt order stopping the German panzers from continuing on to Dunkirk. This would give the Allies just enough breathing space. Operation Dynamo was launched on May 26th, with a number of factors resulting in the success of the operation. A really big factor was the French First Army, who despite being cut off in Lille, mounted a sacrificial defense. Despite capitulating on May 31st, the First Army's defense had diverted enough troops to delay the German attack on Dunkirk. Another huge factor was the fact that the Luftwaffe failed to take out the harbor at Dunkirk, which really helped the speed of the evacuation. In fact, it wasn't until May the 30th that the Germans realized the scale of the operation and ordered an all-out assault to break through the British Expeditionary Forces' defenses. The Royal Navy, along with hundreds of civilian boats, were able to rescue over 330,000 troops. Despite the success, over 40,000 French troops were left behind. However, Dunkirk heavily boosted the morale of many British soldiers and civilians, seeing it not as a loss, but a great victory. Thank you for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. I apologize for not being able to get the entire video released, there was a lot of information and I was barely able to get this done as it is. Be sure to subscribe to catch the second part of the invasion, including the Vigon line, Fall Route, and the aftermath of the invasion.